Hello and welcome to the Association for Creative Industries second virtual town hall. The goal of these are to bring our members up to speed with the association's efforts and initiatives throughout the year. As always, we cannot thank you enough for your attendance and participation. Today, our town hall is presented, pre presented by Jim Thielen, Chair of AFCI, Peter Finn, Executive Director, and Jason Baum, Marketing Director. The virtual town hall is an hour in length and will be recorded and made available shortly after the presentation. We also want to hear from you throughout. Located at the bottom of your Zoom, Zoom screen, you will see a Q&A box. Please use this as questions come. Towards the end of the presentation, we will dedicate time to having a Q&A portion where we will an we answer your questions. Jason will be moderating that portion of the town hall. If you are having any audio issues or have a question outside of the town hall's content, please communi communicate with me using the chat box also located at the bottom portion of your Zoom screen, and I can help troubleshoot with you. And now I would like to pass this over to Jim, who will start us off. Thank you, Priyanka. Welcome everyone to the Association of Creative Industries virtual town hall meeting. My name is Jim Thielen. I'm the chairman of the board of the Association for Creative Industries. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. At the last two annual general meetings at Creativation, and at the virtual town hall meeting that was conducted last August, I commented that the association was continuing to execute changes. Change management is a deliberate process. I read a comment recently by Mary Barra, the chief executive officer of General Motors. That comment was as follows. I don't think anything happens by accident. You have to have an intent to change. As an association, we intend to change. The Board of Directors has already implemented a number of changes to strengthen the association. During 2019, those changes included transitioning the association to Smith Buckland, an association management company. We developed a new strategic plan for the association. We hired Peter Finn as the executive director for AFCI. And we conducted our first virtual town hall last August. We introduced the My AFCI member directory and database and implemented a new website, creativeindustries.org. We added a new Inspire content hub and formed new partnerships with other associations. In the directors meetings that we held last year, we focused on developing a new strategic plan for the association. During that strategic planning process, we re redefined the vision and the mission of the association. A vision statement is meant to be the end game, where we want to be in the future. The vision for the association is an active creator in every home in the world. That's a statement about a rising tide that lifts all boats. When that happens, everyone benefits from that rising tide. We also redefined our mission statement. Today, that mission statement is also known as a purpose statement. It reads as follows. AFCI advances the global creative community by connecting, inspiring, and educating industry professionals who in turn engage and enable creators. We believe that these two statements position the association and you, the members of the association, to be successful in the marketplace today and in the future. So what does all that add up to for you as a member of the association? We talk about the value of membership being greater than the cost of membership. And that's the point of today's meeting. We're going to talk about the strategic goals of the association, the changes that we are continuing to make, and how that will translate into added value for you as a member of AFCI. To discuss the strategic goals of the association, and the value of your membership, I would now like to introduce Peter Finn, the Executive Director of AFCI. Peter? Thanks, Jim. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Peter Finn. I'm the uh, Executive Director at AFCI, and I just want to thank everyone for uh, joining us. I know this is during the workday, so I appreciate you taking the time to, to dial in and uh, listen to uh, what's going on with, with AFCI, and, and as Jim said, 
uh, in terms of what we're trying to bring in terms of uh, increased member values. So um, basically what I'm going to go through is not necessarily focus on creativation, but really talk about the other pillars um, of our strategy and what we have going on this year. And we can go to the next slide, Priyanka. So uh, as Jim had mentioned, we have a strategic plan that our uh, board of directors uh, crafted in uh, May of last year. Uh, this is an update, um, but also a bit of a transformation in terms of the goals of the, of the association. So we have three primary pillars, uh, one of which is to reimagine creativation. Uh, so focusing on uh, attendee experience, uh, being able to effectively uh, communicate um, uh, to our attendees and those that are interested. I, you know, I talk to people and, and you know, the, the, if, if those of you are familiar with FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. That is something that we want to establish for uh, Creativation, to make it a can't miss event. Um, the other two pieces are, are really, you know, these are our year-round pieces and, and, and some of the things that we'll be talking about today. So uh, year-round education. So in addition to what we're providing at Creativation, we want to make sure uh, that we have a number of webinars through the year and, and other areas where we can better support our members. So uh, we want to be able to have content or education for each of our member segments. Uh, so whether that's uh, our retailers, uh, our manufacturers, our designers, our digital content creators, we want to make sure that there's something for everyone uh, to be inclusive in our strategy in terms of education. And then also our other pillar with our content strategy. So we wanna make sure that we are recognizing thought leadership in the industry. What are the new trends? Uh, we wanna have a place to be able to share this, a platform. And so that's, um, we'll talk about our Inspired uh, Hub. Uh, and then we, we wanna make sure that we also are reaching you through uh, several different channels. So not only with our content hub, um, but also through social media, which is a really effective platform for AFCI and I know for, for many, many associations. So the first is uh, education. What we really just wanted to share here is um, we will be conducting webinars every month and trying to do one or more. Um, these are some of the upcoming webinars that we have and, and maybe some of the names here you'll, you'll recognize. The first webinar that's that's, um, that's that's coming up on March 5th, and Jason's going to preview some of this. This is how your AFCI membership can save you thousands. So it's a we have a new program, and I don't want to steal Jason's thunder here, so he'll talk about it. But this is complimentary to all, uh, not just our members, but any prospective members or people that are interested in joining AFCI. Um, I think probably many of the people on the phone. I, I'm going to make this assumption. Probably know uh, Kaiser and Bender great partners of AFCI. Uh, they had a really active um, uh, you know, presence or at, at our Creativation events and also just helping uh, the association in general. They're going to be doing a, a webinar, uh, Visual Merchandising and Store Layout. Uh, so I think that's going to be key for a lot of our retailers. Uh, IP, Intellectual Property, What to Know. So that's gonna be in April. Um, this is a really important topic. I know when I was at Creativation and talking to a number of the members uh, on site and attendees, you know, IP is, is such an important uh, piece of, of what we do um, as, as, as business owners. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're providing education on that. And I think that's going to be a great one. Uh, and then uh, quality over quantity in um, May. Uh, so secrets to a profitable Instagram account. So here's, you know, the, that social media support. Uh, that we can uh, that, that we can provide. So, as you'll see, I think there's a diverse set of topics here, and we want to make sure that you know, as I mentioned before, we're hitting all the different member segments. And I guess probably my ask of you, all those that are joining us today, if you have ideas, please let us know. We we want to hear from you. Um, the best way that you know we can develop these these programs and, and the education and, and and also with the content is sourcing ideas from all of you. So um, I. I I think many of you probably have my contact information or Jason's uh, or some of the other staff, but uh, please let us know. Uh, we always look at our surveys, you know, with each one of these webinars and also I believe with the town hall, uh, we'll be reviewing what feedback comes back and this, and this helps shape uh, all of our programs. So content, this is the other big pillar. So I wanna just talk about, you know, I mentioned some of the channels and some of the things that we're doing. Um, one of the, uh, you know, I, I think everyone's probably recognized or the, 
you know, if you've been tuning in for the last few months, uh, we did launch a new website, and I would say this is a, uh, you know, a, a work in progress as we're building out more content, but one of the first things we wanted to do is just improve the overall user experience. Uh, so we know this is, if this is mobile responsive, uh, we also wanted to make sure that the process of joining and renewing is easy. Uh, you know, that's, this is something that we're constantly refining. We want this to make, it, make this a simple process for people. Uh, we also did some things around uh, just the, the, the member portal in itself to make it a more user friendly um, and also just streamline some of the content. So as I said, there are some things that we're going to be working on throughout the year and I've already gotten some feedback from many of you like, you know, we'd like to see changes here, we'd like to see changes there. And just to let you know, these are things that you know, we, we, uh, we are listening to, we're taking seriously and um, you know, we, uh, I, I think we have a lot more content coming to the site, you know, within the next couple months uh, that we'll be able to share with all of you on the uh, creativeindustries.org site. So as I mentioned before, the content channel. So we have our inspired content hub, which hopefully uh, many of you have checked out. Uh, this is our digital resource for industry insights, trends, and more. Uh, and then we'll be launching our inaugural inspired, the magazine. Uh, so this will be biannual, uh, this is in lieu of our gradient publication. Uh, so um, this will be, and I've, the, the next slide we have a date there, but we'll be launching in April. Uh, and then our Inspired Talks podcast, this is another piece that we'll be launching uh, in the spring. And then as I mentioned before, with our education webinars. And I, and I bring this up because these are, and you know, I'm leaving out social media because I think that, that we have a number of, you know, we have our Facebook groups, but this is, you know, these are our touch points with our members. So this is where not only are we sharing what we're doing, um, you know, AFCI staff or, or, or the, the board, but but also what's going on in the industry. And so um, whether it's uh, different, uh, you know, uh, business insights, uh, you know, what, what's going on with, you know, if there are different economic drivers that we need to highlight, or if there's just, you know, people that we want to recognize that are doing really interesting, creative, innovative things. So. Uh, we really look at this as these are our touch points with all of you. Uh, this is our inspired content. So, you know, as I mentioned before, this is our go-to resource. Um, but we have four categories, and, and I think these, these categories also uh, are very complementary with what we're trying to do in education. So uh, we, we have our trend watch, we have creative innovation, we have our business insights, and social savvy. So these are the four main categories. I wouldn't say, um, or I, I won't say that the, this is it. I think as we move forward, we'll be developing uh, more categories, but these are kind of the four main uh, buckets, uh, uh, if you will, that, that, that we're focusing on. Uh, so right now we've, we've had really great, we've had some great traffic on the content hub, um, accessing this content. And with the print publication, uh, we'll be echoing a lot of what we're doing on the, the content hub as well. So the, those two were really kind of working in tandem. And then I think the, the next slide here is just to, to show that the inaugural issue will be available on uh, April 27th. Um, I've already, you know, I've been uh, involved in the sort of the editorial process and uh, I think we've got some great things in store. Uh, I think it will be a big improvement over what we've done before with Gradient, uh, just in the, the quality of the publication and, and just adding more value for, for our members. And then, you know, my ask of you is, you know, we wanna, my, my email's up here, also um, uh, my colleague Lauren's, uh, uh, who's the editorial coordinator is, is up there. Um, but if there are ideas or things that you think we should be focusing on, we want to hear from you. So whether this is with the content hub, the print publication, the podcast, um, please reach out to me, reach out to Lauren. Um, we have a content committee that we are uh, forming. I don't know if we have some folks that had volunteered for committees, but you should be hearing from us soon um, as we try to pull those together. Uh, we want to hear from our volunteers and we want to make them an integral part of, you know, what we're doing uh, in this process. So uh, we, we'd also like to build a, a kind of a, a bench of people that, of, of contributors uh, to the publication. Uh, so please, you know, feel free to reach out to, to Lauren or I or, or, or uh, Jason um, and we'd love to hear from you. And 
So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna tee this up and then Jason's gonna uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, some, some member value items. Uh, we will be adding likely another pillar to our strategic plan. And I think it's threaded throughout, you know, uh, uh, reimagine creativation, content, education. But what we wanna do is really, uh, member engagement is part of all of those, but we wanna really call it out. And so we're gonna be working as a, as a board and more specifically within our strategic planning committee to really build that out. What does that mean? Um, and I think we all intuitively know, know what that means. We want all these touch points. We wanna be connected with the members. We want members to be able to connect with other members. So this is gonna be a real focal point over the next few months. We have a board meeting in April where I think uh, more of this will be uh, presented as to what the next steps and, and how this really translates to um, you know, our plans over the next uh, couple of years. So I just wanted to tee that up and, I, and, and also um, uh, you know, hand off to Jason where he's gonna talk about some more um, specifics, but just to let you know at a strategic level, uh, this is gonna be more and more of a focal point for the association. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Jason. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'm Jason Baum, Director of Membership and Operations for ASCI. Um, and Priyanka, we can go on to the next slide. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that we've been looking at through membership engagement is uh, the value of your membership. And we really want you to look at it as the value of your membership and that the membership dues that you pay are, um, that you receive that value back and then some. Um, so one of the ways that we uh, have been able to uh, put together a program to be able to do that is through a company called Saving for, Savings for Members, um, who we're excited to partner with and offer um, tangible benefits, things that you would um, in your everyday business lives be using um, some of these services, but we'll be able to get you significant discounts on using those services. So uh, really taking those hidden costs of your day-to-day -day of running business uh, of running your business that can certainly add up and uh, and giving that back to you um, so that you can save a significant amount of money um, in fact savings for members likes to say that their average member when using three or more of their benefits um, saves up to fourteen thousand dollars a year um, so significant savings uh, we can go on to the next slide um, and here are the partners um, through Savings for Members that we're able to um, offer to you. Um, obviously, some big names, ADP um, being one of the largest up there. Um, but then so your um, shipping savings, you'll still receive um, shipping through UPS. We also have now a partnership with uh, YRC Freight, um, Staples, Office Depot, Card Connect, um, and Constant Contact, many others. Um, if you want to go on to the next slide, um, this is just a, a summary, really, of how it will work. Um, there is a webinar next week, as Peter mentioned earlier um, in the town hall. Uh, I encourage everyone to check that out. That's going to be way more in depth than what I'm talking about right now, um, and it is led by our Savings for Members team. Uh, the exciting thing about partnering with Savings for Members is that we have a dedicated team of savings professionals, so people who you can talk to anytime you want access to a program, or want more information about a program, questions about how to obtain um, access to the program, anything that you might have, a question about, um, they're dedicated and, and willing to answer um, at all times. So um, that's an exciting thing that we have for the real white glove service for our membership. Um, I'll just quickly take you um, through the dashboard, um, the savings dashboard, and here's what it looks like um, once you're able to get inside. Uh, you can see in the upper hand corner, uh, upper right hand corner, talk to the savings expert. That's a live chat um, that you'll be able to access if you have immediate questions. Um, and then as, as you scroll down here, um, there's a filter. We try to make this as simple as possible to find a savings or benefit that um, you need um, everything from fuel to payroll, HR, uniforms, so much more. Uh, and if you click on actually one, uh, like um, let's let's scroll down to uh, ADP if possible. Um, so each benefit um, has. Uh, let's just get to ADP. Here we go. Um, and on ADP, if you click on see full details. 
below for each benefit. You'll see each one, even though it might say payroll, for example, ADP offers so much more than just payroll. There's also um, HR and hiring, employee handbook help, um, insurance benefits, so um, even IRAs and 401ks. Um, we're working with them on rolling out all, all different types of uh, benefit programs. So um, each one of these programs has more information. And then when you're ready, if you if what you've read is it sounds good to you, then you click submit. Um, you fill out a quick form, and then a things professional will be in touch with you in order to access that benefit. Um, you'll also most likely be getting calls from them. We're we're doing a little bit of proactive um, outreach to the membership to make sure you're aware of the benefits that you have. And uh, like I said, there'll be much more uh, on this next week. Um, one more thing I did want to show, if you scroll up, um, if you'll notice this is a default to the United States, um, but uh, we also have benefits um, for our Canadian members. And you can easily just toggle it um, at the top so that you can see what the um, Canadian benefits are. Um, we're always working to add more. Um, we've been working with uh, Savings for Members to add to their um list of benefits and and hopefully we can expand upon that for not just the us and canada but potentially more um and if you know of the service or if you're interested in a particular benefit and you're overseas and you want to know about it um please just get in uh, touch with me and i'd be happy to look into it um from our end and um and yeah so that's really the new savings platform that we're really excited about um and if we go back to the um presentation uh, on the next slide, here is the savings team. Um, they have a direct number that you can reach out to, also email, and then the mysform.com is the benefits website direct link. You can also find it through our website, creativeindustries.org. Uh, All right, we can advance to the next slide. Um, and then continuing on uh, with the membership engagement piece, um, the next part that we really wanted to, to stress, um, we've been doing a call for volunteers. You might have seen that come through your email. Um, we uh, are still you know, looking for volunteers. We'll um, probably close that off next week. Um, but if, um, you know, we are, AFCI is led and governed by our volunteer leaders. You know, we really, um, we can't do what we do without our volunteers' help and, and learning what, what it is that you necessarily want out of your membership, what you want out of creativation. Um, so we've put together uh, the committees that you see on your screen right now. Each one has a specific focus. Um, and you can go online to creativeindustries.org and there is a get involved link. Uh, if you click on that, there's more information about each one of these committees and then also a link to, um, to sign up. Uh, while we can't promise uh, that we could fill necessarily uh, for this year, there are opportunities outside of these committees, such as our sections um, and also our chapter. So uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me anytime, um, send them through the um, chat or Q&A below, um, and we'll get back to you. And with that, I'll turn it back to uh, uh, Peter. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Yeah, and, and you'll probably see that we added, um, there are a couple new uh, committees there or, or, or um, you know, where we want to focus on, um, you know, more, do some more around research. Um, and, uh, you know, you also, we're, we're expanding the Creative Asian Advisory Group a little bit. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping, um, you know, if you, if you do have interest, you know, please, you know, contact us. I think, uh, we already have a, a, a great turnout in terms of a response in terms of people that are willing to volunteer, which uh, was fantastic to see. So if, if some of you um, on the phone uh, or, or, or online today uh, were one of those volunteers, we, we uh, really appreciate you uh, uh, adding your name to that list. So thank you. Um, the next uh, slide is really just a snapshot of some of the things that are going on through the year. And we'll We'll put this on the site too, so you kind of know the rhythm of what's going on. Um, but you know, really, uh, we are looking at the launch of Exhibitor and our spart sponsor partnership packages uh, in March, um, and then we'll also be celebrating National Craft Month. So you'll see that in, in some of what we're doing on the Inspired Content Hub, uh, and then AFCI webinar. This is you know kind of throughout what I've mentioned before. Uh, every month, we'll be doing at least one webinar on a particular topic. 
uh, sourced from our education committee and, and also our education staff. Uh, and in April, we'll be launching the Inspired publication, as I said before. We also will be launching our Inspired uh, Talk uh, podcasts. And then we'll also be opening up the call for participation at Creativation uh, 2021. We will have a new um, system in place for that. Uh, so what we're hoping is that uh, this will be a more intuitive process uh, that we'll take our speakers through and, and we'll just uh, really be a, a smoother process all the way around um, for those that are, uh, that are, that are uh, seeking to speak at Creativation and, and be part of the, the educational program. Uh, in May, we're going to be launching some new award categories. So that's, um, we'll be leaning on the awards and recognition committee uh, to expand some of those categories. We already have some, some thoughts about uh, recognizing different segments, different member segments, uh, highlighting a lot of the great work that goes on there. So we'll uh, stay tuned for that. Um, we'll, we'll have the, the open call for awards. And then we'll also, again, have, uh, have our webinars and other things. So July is when uh, we hope to have registration established for Creativation, uh, as well as when housing would open. Uh, and, uh, and again, doing some of our education. August, we'll have another town hall. Uh, so similar to what we have here, where we'll have Jim, myself, and, and Jason, and um, you know, if, if there's another volunteer leader that we need to have on, we'll do that as well. But uh, we'll have that touch point in August. Uh, likely we'll be talking about some of the things that are going on or new things with Creativation. So that will be an opportunity for that. Uh, and then September, uh, we'll have an educational program basically finalized for, um, uh, for, for, for the, the program we finalized for, for, for Creativation. Uh, and then in October, we'll have the second, second publication of Inspired Magazine. Uh, and I'm hoping, um, you know, once everyone's able to see the, the issue that comes out in April, um, like I said before, if you have uh, some ideas or, or things that we should be focusing on, uh, we'd love to hear, you, hear from you. Um, you have my contact information, uh, so we're looking forward to that. And then November, December, you know, I really, I didn't put it on here, but I mean, a lot of that is, you know, from a staff perspective is us getting ready for Creativation uh, in, in January. So. Um, with that, I think the next slide is really around questions, and I believe we already have a, a couple in, Jason, is that right? We do. Um, yeah, the first question uh, revolves around research. Um, for many years, we were provided access to some great market data and research that helped uh, to provide an industry snapshot, offer guidance as to where the industry and category trends were headed. Uh, does AFCI still conduct research? If so, um, can they provide to members for review? Um, yeah, so I, I so I, this is where we want to um, uh, for for research really work with our research committee. And I know internally we have a goal to to put out, and we also. Um, budgeted uh, to uh, work on a couple different research initiatives. So what I'm looking for the research uh, committee is where we can start to develop some of these questions and provide um, uh, some research questions and we can uh, provide more of this uh, data and support for our members. So it's certainly on our radar for this year and I would expect by summer we'll have a little bit more communication about what we're working on. Uh, the next question I'll, I'll answer real quick. Um, this was asking about how do I access the Inspired Content Hub. That's really easy. Uh, you can access it either by uh, the creativeindustries.org website um, or a faster way to access is Inspired, I-N-S-P-I-R-E-D dot creativeindustries.org. Um, and then the next question, um, that came in is um, about Smith Buckland. Um, change to Smith Buckland was primarily financially motivated. Now that Smith Buckland has been in use for about 15 months and books for Creativation 2020 are closed, um, what do the financials for the organization look like today? And um, they want to know if Creativation came in a profit loss, break even, um, and the, really asking, um, can the organization share quarterly reports uh, on our financials? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we actually at the annual business meeting shared uh, the financials, uh, unaudited financials for uh, for 2019. Um, and I think you know a lot of what um, Greg Tipsert, who is the chair of the finance committee, shared is that what we've been able to do over 2019 is really work on our expense management. So from that side, um, we were able to um, uh, effectively save save some money, especially with the move to uh, Smith Buckland and the new staffing model. Um, revenue wise, is that's that's the big focus for us. I mean, this is where um, I know over the last several years, AFCI has had some challenges. Um, we are still looking at the, we're, we're still reconciling some of our invoices and, and the like for creativation um, to where we wound up. So we'll be able to share some of that information later. Um, it would be a little premature to, to, to give you the you know, insight on the, those financials right now. Um, but you know, we, we wanna be as transparent as possible and what we're, you know, what's going on with the association because it's your association too. Um, I don't know if we'll be doing quarterly uh, financials, but we'll certainly have, um, we'll be able to report out on some of the successes. And, and obviously, you know, we have to, as a, um, you know, have an annual report of some kind. So we'll, we'll make sure that that's available to all the members. But um, if you do have, co you know, questions for me, uh, we can certainly take that offline and I'm, I'm happy to respond to, to, uh, to any questions about the, you know, the, um, you know, if there are specifics about the, um, uh, some of the, some of the finances, but, um, uh, but that's, I don't know if Jim uh, Thielen, uh, if you had any other comments on that. Well, no, the, uh, at the annual business meeting that was conducted at Creativation this past January, we did, this, we did uh, show the financials for 2018 and 2019. In 2019, we did show a profit for the year. So we did, to your point, Peter, we did significantly reduce the expense associated with operating the business, but we did that... Um, We'd also, we had a small reduction, we had a reduction in the revenues, but the expense exceeded the reduction in revenue. So the bottom line was we did make money in 2019. So, and, and I, I just should also point out that the, I believe we have um, the, uh, I, who, who, I don't know who asked this question, but I'm happy to share the, annual business meeting uh, PowerPoint with anyone. And, and we can also get that. If it's not already posted at the website, I can uh, get that get that posted so you have that snapshot. Uh, the question uh, on the annual meeting was uh, whether it was recorded um, and are the um, any of those financial things like that are really available? And the answer to that question is yes. And you can find the annual business meeting um, presentation on creativeindustries.org. It is posted under news, um, and then it's its own link, annual business meeting and town hall. Yeah. Uh, just as a follow-up to that. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, another question came in um, actually prior to, um, to the uh, town hall on what we're doing to attract uh, European or um, uh, European attendants uh, to creative Asian. Um, and, uh, and I believe here, uh, do you have an answer for that question? Yeah, so for um, international, um, I'd say this is a, a, you know, an area of some focus. We'll be exhibiting at H&H uh, &H, uh, in Cologne next month. Um, so the, the purpose there is to, uh, to really get in front of some of the, the international audience. I was at Creative World um, in January where I met with some of the Creative World staff and we wanna keep the conversation going with them um, just to really make sure that we get in front of uh, international uh, retailers. And specifically, you know, we, we always draw from Europe uh, at Creativation, and, and we want to make sure that uh, we're out in front of those folks. So we do have a couple things going. Um, I'm going to try and stay in more uh, constant contact with uh, some of our uh, European members and also other organizations that are working in that space. And we have a, a couple of questions uh, regarding Creativation. Um, one is, uh, will the Tim Collins group be at Creativation in 2021? 
Uh, so Tim Collins will likely be partnering with them again, but I know that there were uh, concerns that was vo voiced and how that was rolled out. Um, and I completely understand we don't want to be working at cross purposes. Um, I talked with a couple of, you know, longtime members and, and folks that, you know, work um, on the workshops and, um, you know, message definitely received. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're not, um, uh, again, working at cross purposes and, and, and that we have them as more seamless uh, with the program. So we are working on that. Um, and uh, just to let, if, if um, uh, those of you that did have concerns about that, that is, that is something that we'll be working on for 2021. And uh, as far as our partnerships go, uh, will there be a TNA pavilion at Creativation? Um, and then another question regarding the dates, um, which we could probably give at the end of the answer of the TNA pavilion question. Um, yeah, so there will likely be, um, I, I'll just I guess say that there, there will likely be uh, further collaboration between TNA and AFCI. I don't know if that's going to materialize as a pavilion or not. Um, I, I would love it if, it if we are able to do that again. And um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, we're definitely in conversations with um, their staff and board. And, um, you know, I think there's, uh, like I said, I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to collaborate through, the, through this year and then also um, at Creativation again. Um, you know, they, they were uh, a good partner. I mean, things came together pretty quick and I really appreciate um, you know, the work of their board and making that a smooth process or as smooth as, as I think it could go. Um, so we definitely want to, uh, we're looking forward to, to making that partnership work again. And then I think there was a question about dates. Jason, is that right? Yes, question about oh. dates. Yeah. Oh yeah, so uh, uh, January 14th to the 18th, uh, again at the Phoenix Convention Center in 2021. Um, and, and actually this question just came in and I'll, I'll um, throw this out there as well, um, since it's along the same lines, any connections with NAMTA? Yeah, so we, um, I've been uh, talking with their, uh, NAMTA's uh, Executive Director, Leah, uh, Siffringer uh, quite a bit. Uh, we are hoping to forge uh, a partnership in the coming years and I think that will likely materialize. I don't want to get ahead of myself but um, you know, I think that there's a lot of interest on their side, certainly a lot of interest on our side. I think a lot of interest amongst our members uh, to be able to, to join forces. So um, I, I guess the, 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 the quick answer is yes, we're in conversations to, to be able to uh, co-locate in the future. I'll answer this next question. Um, is there any way um, to locate members who live near me so that we can collaborate in between uh, Creativation? And the answer to that question is yes. Uh, and that's the My AFCI uh, that we were referring to earlier uh, in the presentation. Um, it's part of our new website, but you can access it at members.creativeindustries.org. Um, and it's got relatively simple navigation on the left-hand side of the, the navigation. When you go to members.creativeindustries.org, um, you'll see directories, and you can search um, by company. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, there's actually a few different ways to search it, um, but that's probably the best way. Um, and if you have any questions about how to use the directory, um, feel free to email me, uh, J-B-A-U-M at creativeindustries.org. We're also always looking for feedback and we're constantly trying to improve this area if it is brand new. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, is there, was there another question, Jason? Uh, just if we have any, um, a date, uh, do we have a date or location for um, 2023? We do not. Um, so uh, right now we are looking, that's, you know, something that the, um, the, the board and the committees, um, you know, their the creativation committee, uh, we're going to be um, looking at uh, new locations. And I, and I think this will uh, 
fulfill that strategic goal too of reimagining creativation because it gives us an opportunity to um, make some real kind of structural changes based on some of the feedback that we've also received uh, from the members. Um, there was a poll survey that we did uh, back in the fall and I'll try to actually share some results from that poll survey and my monthly update which will be coming up uh, beginning of March or just next week. Um, but that is really going to help guide us. Um, I also, 2023 is an opportunity for us to partner with NAFTA. Um, so that's the other, I, I think, other piece that we'll be looking at. Um, so I, I, we will be in communication with uh, the membership as this begins to, to shape up. Uh, a question came in about how do we access benefits for ADP? Uh, so there will be a webinar um, that will go into more depth on this next week. Um, that's going to be really walking through the whole process. Um, but the easiest way to do it, I mean, it's really simple, is going to creativeindustries.org and then go to what we do, and you'll see member discounts. Um, and when you click on that, it, it has the savings opportunities listed and then also the savings dashboard. And all you have to do is um, click on view savings opportunities, click on ADP, and um, fill out the form, and they'll be in touch with you. The other way to do it is if you don't want to go through all that, um, you could just click on talk to a savings expert at the top um, or go to the phone number that we had earlier in this presentation or email and let them know that you're interested in ADP. Um, I don't know if you want to go back to that slide real quick so we could just put it up there. Uh, and this goes for any of the benefits uh, that will be offered. If you want, uh, you can call that number today or email that, uh, that email address. They're ready. Um, we already have members partaking in the program. Um, and someone from the Savings for Members team will help get you set up. I'll just leave it open for, for another minute. Um, I don't see any new questions coming through. I, I did see one here. The, it asked if the annual meeting was recorded and are the artifacts available for those that uh, could not make Creativation. Um, and I will say that we had a media partner for Creativation, uh, Hedgehog Hollow, um, and they did some recordings on site. And I know we're, we're working with our uh, marketing and education team to make sure that some of those recordings are available. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, we'll likely have an announcement about that as well. But I know that there should be, I know we, uh, there should be a recording of the um, industry uh, panel. Uh, so that's actually on the education page, uh, creativeindustries.org. Um, but uh, I, I believe that there were some other things that were recorded. So we're, we, we should ha have those assets available to, um, to the members. Um, and a, a question just came in that I'll, I'll answer. Um, it had to do with finding members local again. Um, just asking for, for me to review that again. Uh, it's members.creativeindustries.org. Uh, and that takes you to the My AFCI page. You'll need to log in. Um, and if you have any questions about how to log in, um, you know, there's a, there's a forgot password. If you're uh, new to the website, you can fill out information. But as long as you're a member, your, your information is in there. Um, so you can just click forgot password if it's your first time accessing the site. Um, but that takes you to a directory um, and you can search by zip code. And if you have any questions, again, um, on how to access any of this, you can just uh, shoot me an email, jbaum at creativeindustries.org. Oh, thank you, Priyanka. Yeah, so this is what it looks like um, on the uh, organizational directory at myACI, my uh, creativeindustries.org. And you could search by the name of the company. If you're looking for buyers in your area, you could search membership type or um, suppliers in your area. It's, it's everyone is in here. Um, and then you can also search by zip code, um, which we have never had really uh, the opportunity to do before. Um, and then you can just click search and, and find all the members uh, that are local to you. Uh, 
Um, and then just we had a, a couple questions about uh, just report out from uh, the board and board discussions uh, and just you know transparency with the members. Jim, did you want to talk a little bit about that at all? I mean, I think some of that is is through the work of our committees and uh, board members uh, chairing those committees and, and and having members at large on those committees. Um, but is there anything that you want to share about board dynamics going forward? I don't have uh, visibility to that particular question, Peter. So I'll let me answer what I think you're asking. The the, uh, the as has been discussed in this presentation, there are a number of committees. Each of those committee has a charter associated with it. Uh, we have appointed a chairman who is uh, a member of the board of directors, and there are generally speaking, two additional board members. We have as many as six at-large members of those committees, um, and we ask those committees to execute against the charter. Um, if the question is, are there updates, uh, that will be part of, we can do this part of the virtual town hall meetings, and uh, we have the option potentially to post things on the website to make sure that there is a availability of information with regard to the activities of committees. Yeah, I think, you know, the question here is that, like, you know, um, uh, you know, how will we be uh, communi communicating on a more frequent basis, any changes, new directions, et cetera, that are done at the, uh, at the board level. So uh, making sure that, um, you know, as, as things are happening at the board level, that that's shared out. Um, yeah, and, I, and I would say, you know, just quickly from my, from my perspective, I mean, I, I certainly, um, you know, I think that's maybe part of my job as well is is to make sure that uh, I'm I'm sharing some of those things you know in terms of new direction, especially if we're working on a, a new strategic goal and what are the sort of the, the corresponding tactics with that. Um, you know, I can certainly play the role in helping um, you know, make sure that the members are aware of that. And I, I think for the whole staff team, but um, I don't know if, if Jimmy, you had any any uh, comments about that. No, I think that's, that is the point. Uh, we have a couple of communication vehicles that we're using now that we haven't had in the past, one of them being Inspire, uh, and then uh, a monthly communication that's done uh, that talks about the association, things that are going on in the association, then a website. Uh, those are three specific areas that we, we have used and will continue to use as an association to communicate things that are going on in the association. Great. Um, and I don't know if, if were there some other other questions that came up. I can't see. Um, let's see. All right. Any anything else, uh, Jason? That you're seeing that's coming up. We need to address here. Uh, no, I don't see anything. There's a there's a question directed towards me, but um, I'm answering that offline. It's not really a, a question. So, um, you know, the one thing I will say that is, as you are navigating the website. Um, you know, note that, you know, we just launched it um, back in September um, and we've been rolling out features uh, since then. So this is, this is a new website for us as it is a new website for you. Um, and as you encounter anything that might be a bug or, or something like that, please, you know, um, let us know. And, and people have been great so far letting us know, um, you know, what they're encountering and, and that just helps us to improve it um, for you. So. Um, yeah, that's really, uh, that's the only other thing that I uh, see that's come up. Oh, actually, uh, one just came in um, as I'm answering. How will AFCI board members be working in conjunction with uh, respective representative sections? Can I, if I may, uh, working with the sections is very, very important. That's an association function that's done through Peter rather than the board members. Um, that's Peter's function as the executive director is to work with the sections and the chapters to make sure that uh, we're doing the things that are in the interest of those groups. So that is really Peter's responsibility rather than the board's responsibility. Yeah. And I, I, I think that, um, you know, it's a good question and, you know, it's, Certainly, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, we'll be working on through this year and beyond, uh, make sure that um, we are uh, connecting with, with the sections as much as possible. I do think that there's some opportunity for, um, you know, for, for board members, depending on, 
you know, if they're chairing a certain committee and there's a, a relative topic in another, you know, in a, in a section meeting or, you know, that, that there's, you know, a little bit more sharing between the different groups. So, um, you know, we, we, we have, we're a little bit more integrated in our approach. And I think that's, you know, that's really like a governance piece. And that's something that, you know, as Jim was saying, that I can help with and help facilitate. Um, I, I certainly have a lot of experience in that and, and something that, um, you know, we'll, we'll be looking at and working on uh, for, for the year. Um, and I think that's it. I mean, I, I uh, again, I want to thank everybody for, for dialing in or, or being online today. Um, I know it's during the work day and, uh, and I'm, I'm really pleased that we were able to get as many of you on today. And, and uh, we really appreciate your questions and your time and being a member of, of uh, AFCI. So I don't know if, if Jim or Jason, did you have any other remarks? Uh, just wanted to say thank you for everybody's participation today. We, um, as I said had in my opening remarks, this is all about the value we can deliver to you as members of the association. When we do that, everybody benefits, and uh, that's part of what we're trying to do in 2020 and the years for going forward. Thank you for your ongoing support of the association.